So tonight's cram session is on Poisson distributions. Poisson is found in the probability and statistics section of the NCES reference handbook. I will be showing you specific pages and formulas as we work our way through this cram session. All right, like I always like to do, I like to get into practical example problems right off the bat. We're going to get uh, turn up the heat right away and then learn the concepts as we go through. And so this practice problem says an assembly line worker makes errors at random at a mean rate of seven for every 100 assemblies he handles. The probability that he will have no make no errors for that same allotment of assemblies is most close to what? So let's talk about what a Poisson experiment is. And I'm going to love saying that all night, so I hope you guys don't get annoyed. So Poisson experiments is uh, experiments that are yielding numerical values of a random variable x, which is the number of outcomes or events, occurring during a given time interval or within a region. Now a time interval may be any lake, length, and as you'll see in many of these problems, that could be a minute, a day, a week, a year, it could be a month, it could be a second, it could be any, any length of time. A region may be a line segment, it may be an area, a volume, a door, a garage, an intersection, a piece of material, things like that. Experiments of a random variable X may represent things such as the number of freeway exits per minute between the hours of 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. in October, and this is a time interval example. Or it can be the number of surface defects present on a component within a mechanical assembly, and that's a region. So say you pull out a gear or something, and you're looking to uh, assess and see how many deformities or surface defects are present on that piece of material, uh, you know, that component and that uh, experiment can also follow a Poisson distribution, although not necessarily that it will, but it may. So what characterizes a Poisson distribution? We know there's a number of different distributions that we work out work with out there, the normal distribution, T distribution, student distribution, which is the same. We got uh, the binomial distribution, we got chi squared, things like that. So what characterizes a Poisson distribution? So it, it is a discrete distribution. It either, either is a yes or no. It either either the event occurs or it doesn't occur. It's not continuous where an event can occur in between um, certain values. So it, the, it's a discrete distribution. The number of occurrences or events within a given time interval or region is independent of the number of occurrences within an any other interval or region. The probability of a single occurrence or event during a very short time interval or a region is proportional to the length of the interval or size of the region and does not depend on the occurrences outside of this interval or region. So if I had to loosely recap what all that says, essentially the events, the occurrences are both random and they're independent of any other event occurring. And also within this distribution, the mean number of events or occurrences is constant throughout the experiment. So let's head back over to our first example problem. It says an assembly line worker makes errors at random at a mean rate of seven for every 100 assemblies he handles. And we want to know, what are the chances he makes no errors? Well, first we got to realize that this is a Poisson distribution. There, he's making errors and they're random. We know that the mean rate throughout the whole experiment is going to remain constant at a rate of seven for every 100 assemblies he handles. So what is the probability that he makes no errors in this same allotment of 100 assemblies? 
So here's a page from your NCES reference handbook, and this is page this is uh, this is version 9.4 for computer-based testing. And if you hone in right there on your reference handbook, you'll see that you are given the formula, the equation for the Poisson distribution. So we have lambda, we have x. X is going to be your random variable, and lambda is actually going to be your mean. So let's pull that back over to our solution. And let's just define these so we know that the function is going to output some probability. Lambda is our mean and x is our random discrete variable. So let's highlight what we are given. We're given that the mean is seven errors per allotment. We know that the interval is going to be 100 assemblies. And you'll see that uh, it's very important to recognize whether or not the uh, interval of, of in which this mean is occurring is equivalent to the interval in which you're being asked to define a particular value. And you'll see in future problems when they're not equal, some work needs to be done. But in this case, we are told that we're looking for the probability that he will make no errors for the same allotment of assemblies. So our interval is going to be 100 assemblies. And of course our experiment we're going to take the random variable x and that's going to be zero errors. And of course we're looking for that probability output. So there's our Poisson distribution function over there to the right. I just copy and pasted it. We can plug in our variables. So again, our, our random variable is zero er errors, which I highlighted in orange in our formula directly from our NCES reference handbook. And then our mean is simply seven, and that's lambda, and that's, we just plug seven in. So if we hop in to our calculator and we just plug that in, remember factorial is a product, and zero factorial is equal to one. And when we push all of our numbers into our calculator, we get a value of 0 .000912, which tells us that the probability that he will make no errors is very slim. It's 0.09%. I need to talk to this individual. But it's 0.09%. And let's hope that's not an airplane assembly or something more critical such as... Uh, anything that could be catastrophic. But uh, in this case, it's a fraction of a tenth percent uh, probability that he, can, he will not make any errors. All right, let's flip the page and we'll, we'll work that same example. Now we're gonna give him a little leeway and say, what if, what's the probability that he will make nine errors? So same problem, but in this case, we're just trying to assess what are the chances that he's actually going to make a ton of errors nine in this case, above the mean rate in which he makes them. Again, we know that the errors are at random. The mean rate remains the same at seven, and the assemblies are, uh, the, the interval is 100. And again, we are looking for the probability that he will make nine errors for the same allotment of assemblies. So the, then again, we uh, hop back to page 53 of our NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. Again, that's version 9.4. If you all are looking at any other version, it may be a different page. But there will be a table showing all the probability and dis density function uh, that you will need to know come exam day. And specifically, we're just worried about the Poisson. The Poisson. So we pull that back over to our problem statement. Again, we're going to have some probability output when we relate the mean and the random discrete variable in the way that is defined. Again, what are we given? We're given the mean is seven errors. 100 assemblies is our interval. This remains the same for the probability that we are assessing. And this time our random variable is going to be nine errors. So we pull over that general formula, we plug in our information. 
This time you see seven remains the same as it did in the previous problem, but we changed the orange value to nine. So we plug that into our calculator and we get 0 0.101, which tells us that there's a 10% chance that this man is going to make a ton of mistakes above his mean rate, 10.1%. So remember that factorial, that exclamation point. When you're plugging it into your calculator, there is typically a factorial key, a button. But if not, it's 9 times 8, 9 times 7 times 6 and all the way down to 1. Hopefully you have that factorial key dialed in. It is on the TI-36X Pro. You'll see it when we get into hacking this with our calculator in today's cram session. But if not, you'll have to manually input it, save it, store it as a variable or whatnot, plug it into your calculation. So here is what this individual's error rate or error distribution looks like on a graph, on a plot. I only went up to a number of 10 errors per 100 allotment. And as you can see, that's how it's distributed across this plot. So we know that when P is uh, X is equal to zero, when our random variable is zero, when we're looking for him to not make any errors. If you see right there on the far left corner, I highlighted it, the chances are 0.1%, so a tenth of a percent. And the chances that he makes nine errors, exactly nine errors, is going to be 10.1%. And we know that if we take from um, the probability from the get from an instance of zero or event of zero up to infinity, then the total area under that curve is going to equal one. Remember, that's really important. Under any probability distribution curve, it always, the probabilities always add up to one. So they'll peak at some point and they'll tone off, they'll play off, whatever you want to call it, fade off until everything equals one.